Angel to Angel is a nonprofit organization that focuses on giving back to the needy, the homeless, and the disenfranchised. To donate to Angel to Angel, go to angel to angelhelp.org. Two days ago, I, along with the rest of the staff of Angel to Angel, went out early, early uh, in the morning, around 5.30 a.m., and fed the homeless breakfast. We went to the Austin Street Center in Dallas, Texas, and uh, we set up tables, and we handed out over 250 breakfast sandwiches, uh, juice, fruit cups, uh, bananas, apples, and oranges to the homeless in the Austin Street Center homeless shelter. Uh, that was my first time doing that. I just joined the staff. I just joined the team. They reached out to me. Actually, the president and founder of Angel to Angel reached out to me and asked uh, would I be willing uh, to take on a leadership role within our organization. Uh, and, you know, I thought about it and I, and I accepted. So this is my first time being a part of the team going out on an outing. And actually, this was my first time in life going to a homeless shelter. Uh, I've never been in a homeless shelter. I have fed the homeless in passing, uh, giving them money. You know, I've purchased food for the homeless, but I've never actually, in an organized way, fed the homeless. Now, when I was young, I would go with my mom periodically uh, to hand out meals through Meals on Wheels, but that was different. I, I don't think uh, I don't think those people were homeless where we went. Uh, I think we catered to the elderly. Yeah, I can't remember those people being homeless, man. This was years ago, um, over three decades ago. So I, I just can't remember clearly if these people are homeless, but. From what I remember, they were just elderly. They were, you know, old, old people that uh, couldn't really get out the house. That's what I remember. But I've always been respectful uh, to the homeless. I'm not one of those guys that, that look down on them, um, that talk disrespectfully, you know, to them. I've always wondered the story behind it and how did they get in that situation? That's what I always wonder. Uh, not from a judgmental standpoint, just curiosity, right? I love stories. I'm a storyteller, and I love to hear people's stories. But a couple of days ago, when I went out with the team to, to feed the homeless, uh, something had me uh, confused. And... Uh, had me pondering over, am I right for thinking this way or am I wrong or is there a right or wrong in this situation? So I'll, I'll explain that to you. Let's get into it. Get your glasses up, get your glasses up, a toast to the men. Now, when I talk about homeless, I'm not talking about uh, you having to sleep on your mother's couch or your, your homeboy's couch for a few weeks or a few months, but you're con contributing to the household. Even if you're not, you know, I don't consider that homeless. I'm not talking about you hit a, a rough patch in life and you had to go get a room. Uh, but, I mean, if you're paying for that room, you know, I don't consider you homeless. You know, someone didn't put you up in it. When I say homeless, I'm saying the government or nonprofits have created shelter for you to live in, and you're not contributing uh, to that at all. The government or the nonprofit organization is providing that shelter for you or you're 
living on the street, you know, with a tent or, you know, or no tent. That's what I consider homeless. Now, I was actually looking forward to feeding the homeless, going to the Austin Street Center shelter. I was looking forward to it. Like I said, this was my first time. And, uh, you know, I'd taken on this leadership role within the organization. And so I was looking forward to it. And uh, I was pretty excited to to give back. And, and shout out to McDonald's, uh, Mickey D's. They provide sandwiches and, uh, and, and a donation. So shout out to them. Uh, you can't forget that. And so, you know, people don't have to give you anything. And, and when they do, be grateful. But I was there, we were there setting up shop, uh, preparing. And this was before we actually started handing out sandwiches and juices and, and fruit cups and, and uh, fruit. Someone mentioned the Dallas Cowboys. You know, if you know anything about Dallas, uh, we're hardcore Dallas Cowboys fans. People love the Dallas Cowboys. People may not even necessarily like football, but they support the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, we support the Dallas Cowboys more than we support you know, the Texas Rangers baseball team or the Dallas Mavericks basketball team or the Dallas Stars hockey team. We really get behind the Dallas Cowboys hardcore fans and that's why a lot of people do not like us because we're delusional we will fight you people have gotten into a fight over the dallas cowboys and other states we are delusional we feel like we're going to win the super bowl every year we will debate you to no end and a lot of people don't like us for that fact now we're setting up shop someone mentions football the nfl and the Dallas Cowboys, of course, come up because we're in Dallas. And uh, one other people mentioned they were rooting for another team outside of Dallas. I can't remember the team. Uh, a homeless guy. And another homeless guy yells uh, ecstatically, uh, you're in Cowboy Nation. This is Cowboys Nation. We're going to the Super Bowl. He was excited. And, and he went on and on about the Dallas Cowboys and how we're America's team. Now, I'm conflicted about this. When I was hearing this and watching this, I'm, I'm being honest, my immediate thought was, man, you know, regardless of the situation they're in, they can still enjoy some of the nuances in life and, and uh, just, just some of the things everyone gets to enjoy. This puts us on equal ground. You know, they're excited about the Cowboys, just as excited as someone living in a $5 million house is. You know, this... This breaks all barriers and can be, I guess, uh, for better or for worse, a distraction about your situation. But then another side of me uh, came to the forefront, another thought. And I thought, man, this probably should be the last thing you're worried about is the Dallas Cowboys. You probably need to try to get out of this situation. And so I thought about it. I said, man, I'm conflicted. Was I wrong for, for the first thought? You know, and was I wrong for the second thought? Or can both of those thoughts be true? You know, uh, a good balance. You know, uh, now the second thought, I wouldn't say I was judging, but I guess it was the, the, uh, the, just the man in me to have some kind, some type of a sense of urgency to know what's going on and not get comfortable. So a side of me was like, man, this is cool that you can enjoy life and not be so stressed out and relaxed. But another side of me was like, man, are you too comfortable in this situation? And, you know, I was trying to perceive myself in that person 
and I, I don't know, man. I, I would be uh, I don't think I'd be worried about the Dallas Cowboys. That's just me to get out of that situation. And I was thinking, man, how do you get to the point where you're comfortable uh, in that situation? Now, I mentioned in the book of Toast to the Man when I was younger. Uh, I uh, was in jail for about nine months uh, for some activity I did as a young man. Uh, man, I was maybe 22, 23, something like that. I can't remember. Between 21, actually maybe between 20 and 23, something like that. Uh, but I was never comfortable. I never got comfortable. Um, I was very disciplined and I never wanted to get comfortable. Uh, I wouldn't eat every day. I wouldn't eat any bread at all. And uh, never uh, sit around and watch all the TV shows. You know, I read a lot and thought a lot, but I never wanted to get comfortable because I would look around, I would see guys that were comfortable, like this was their home. And they had been there several times. You know, they, this is what a return visit for them, a return vacation. And so I never wanted to be like that. And uh, just from watching, I knew, hey, I don't want to get comfortable. But, you know, at what point do you relax and say, okay, for the time being, this is my situation. I'm going to make the best of it. Right. So that's, that's what had me conflicted. And, you know, and maybe that's not in my business. I'm there to feed the homeless, but it was, it was a thought. I'm human. I'm there to, to give, provide, you know, provide charity. Uh, but my thought is, it's good to provide, it's good to give to the homeless. Uh, the Bible says, uh, those who give to the poor will always be blessed. But those that turn a blind eye to them will suffer. You know, I've never turned a blind eye, although this is my first time participating in the organized giving of, to the homeless. Like I said, I've never turned a blind eye. Uh, I don't think I've ever rejected someone that's asked me for money at a gas station. If I had some money on me, I, I don't remember a time I've ever rejected them. Even if I, on the surface, didn't even have it to give. I, I said, man, this man is doing worse to me. I'm at least able to get some gas and he's doing worse to me. So I would give uh, even if I didn't have much. And I guarantee you, man, I promise you, uh, I've always been blessed in that way. And it didn't take long. Soon after some money came my way, it never failed uh, because I was given in the right spirit. Uh, soon, I, I promise you, soon after I've always done that money flowed my way from outlets I didn't expect. Um, yeah, so I've always been uh, that way. And that's the way to be. So you out there who are listening, man, if you're going through a rough time, if you're going through it, you, you uh, don't have enough, you're lacking, Whatever you do have, just trust me on this. Whatever you do have, sow it into someone who's doing worse than you. I promise you it will multiply. You'll get it back and it won't take long. It won't take long at all. You'll get it right back, but you got to do it in the right spirit, the, the right uh, mindset. Now, my other thought about the homeless situation was, how do people stay in that situation? Now, I do know uh, and I believe that people, any, anyone can get in that situation. Listen, anyone can get in that situation. That's not my thought. My thought is how do you stay there? How do you remain there for years? And so I started doing some research. And man, we got some deep issues that we need to address. So. Researchers say that 85% of the women and 77% of the men who 
or homeless have experienced at least, at least one childhood traumatic experience. At least one. So that tells me they have psycho uh, or social psycho issues or, or mental issues that they have experienced through childhood that they have carried on to adulthood and never dealt with, never resolved, never faced head on. Now, many probably would think they got into the situation because of alcohol and drugs, but actually that's not the case. Um, the alcohol and drugs is a unfortunate byproduct or a result of the trauma, of the childhood trauma, right? You're not uh, between the ages of one month uh, and, and let's say 12 years old, for the most part, uh, drinking alcohol and doing drugs. The, drama ha the trauma happens first. The alcohol abuse and the drug abuse is a result, unfortunate result or byproduct of the trauma. So we got to deal with the trauma first. But how do we how do we get there? How do we deal with it? Because you can't force people to deal with the trauma. I can't force anyone to get off the street, to get off the shelter, to, to sit in a room. So we got to start today. We got we got to make the change today. You know, maybe we can't help the ones who are, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70 years old. But we can start making a change today. Now, here are a few changes we can make today. First, be accountable. Be accountable. Uh, ladies, men, stop harming these kids. Stop harming these kids sexually, physically, mentally. That's the main thing. Stop creating trauma in these kids' lives. Now, I know some of you watching this are guilty of sexually abusing, physically abusing, mentally abu abusing kids. We got to stop it. Women, stop procreating with men, or if you have kids already, dating men who have low character. Stop it. Understand you get lonely. Is it worth the risk of procreating with someone, creating something with someone that you're gonna have to give back to society? We gotta deal with this person in society. You procreated with this guy because you were lonely. You had self, low self-esteem. But then you give this creation back to society eventually. What, at 17, 18 years old, we got to deal with it. We got to deal with what's in his DNA or what, what happened to him, what happened to her. Stop it. Brothers, stop procreating with women with low character. Now, I'm not saying don't pro procreate with someone that has experienced trauma, but if they haven't dealt with that trauma, they hadn't resolved it, they hadn't worked on it, they hadn't faced it, and their behavior, their character resembles that, mirrors that, why would you procreate with this person? and create a child we're going to have to deal with when they turn seven. Actually, before that, other children are going to have to deal with this child. Yeah, yeah, that five-year-old child that's always in trouble, always hitting somebody, always cussing out the teacher. Yeah, that child. We got to deal with that child. That's the first thing, accountability. Now, there is a great racial divide when it comes to homelessness. African-Americans make up 40% of 
of the homeless situation. Uh, next, Native Americans, Native Indian, uh, American Indians and Native Americans, uh, uh, Pacific Hawaiians, uh, Islanders, they make up a, a large percentage. Uh, we gotta mix those all together, right? And then the biggest, the second biggest uh, percentage is Mexicans. And, and the lowest, Asian and whites. You gotta think about that. Now, Mexicans, um, I can't really speak too much on that. Other Mexicans watching this can. Uh, I can't speak on Islanders. We know what the Native Americans have gone through. I'm gonna speak to Blacks. We still gotta deal with a lot of trauma that was uh, inflicted upon us and we experienced through slavery. Uh, this stuff has been carried on from generation to generation and somewhere we gotta break. We gotta break it, break the routine, break the curse, be disciplined, face our demons and, uh, and heal. We can point the finger. I can't change anyone. I can't, uh, we can't look towards any other race. We got to do the work ourselves. And a lot of that, whether you want to hear it or not, comes from forgiveness, being accountable. If you can't forgive, you can't be accountable. You always point the finger and make an excuse. And maybe it's a justified excuse. Maybe, maybe you're justified in pointing the finger. But there will be no change if you don't be accountable. There will not be. Now, I know a lot of people will say, man, slavery was so long ago. Man, it really wasn't. It really wasn't. Right? Uh, slavery ended towards the end of 1800. I want to say 1878, I want to say. Either 1885, 1878. So check this out. If you have someone in your life right now who is 80 years old, We'll just say 80. If you have someone in your life who, who is 80 years old, when they were born, and there are a lot of 80-year-olds out here, when they were born, slavery had only been abolished 76 years. Think about that. That's putting it in perspective. If you have someone in your life that's 80, we'll just use the, the number 80. When they were born, Slavery was only had only been abolished 76 years. That's not that long ago. So there's a lot of stuff, man, we, we still got to deal with uh, to overcome the trauma. And I think that plays a major, major part in what we experience today through families uh, from sexual abuse, mental abuse, uh, physical abuse. I think that plays a major part. Uh, in the homeless situation. So, so brother, it's just something to think about. Let me know what you think. But yeah, that was something I was conflicted, conflicted about. You know, like I said, on one hand, the brother was able to enjoy some luxuries of life. You know, watching the NFL is a luxury. Uh, whether you want to say small or big, it is a luxury. Then on the other hand, I was thinking, well, man, should he be so comfortable in this situation? So, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's something I was conflicted about. Let me know what you think. As always, from me to you, love, peace.